Hey there, is today your first time here? Or maybe your first time in a while? If so, maybe you're wondering exactly who we are and what this church is all about. Well, we'd like you to know that we're a group of ordinary people who are on an amazing journey together, following Christ. Our guide is the Bible because it's the divinely inspired Word of God and it will never take us in the wrong direction. Along the way, we hope you'll see that we are welcoming and spiritually passionate and that getting to know you is a big deal to us. We know that the road is rough sometimes, but we'll work really hard to bring you practical and relevant messages to equip and encourage you through life's ups and downs. We want you to know that we care about this community and we believe that it's our job to make it a better place. So no matter who you are or where you've been, we're glad you're here with us today. And we hope that you'll join us on our journey, following Christ and living out His plan for us. So welcome to church. When I think upon your goodness And your faithfulness each day I'm convinced it's not because I am worthy To receive the kind of love that you give But I'm grateful for your mercy I'm grateful for your grace And because of how you poured out yourself I have come to sing this song out in praise morning church we welcome you to our online service this morning kindly join us from wherever you are and before we start let's pray father in the mighty name of jesus christ we want to thank you this morning that you've given us the privilege to be in your presence we pray that lord jesus even as we've gathered here jehovah that your presence may not leave us king of glory we pray that lord jesus may you touch each and everyone that has made their time to be part of this service king of glory we worship and we bless you in the mighty name of jesus christ we pray amen Praise the Lord from wherever you are. Let's just go before the Lord. Indeed, God has been good and he has sustained us. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Lord, you're welcome. Kutumaini sina Ila damu yake Yesu Sina wema wakutosha Dambi zangu kuziosha Yeah. 
and dance. Bye. 
I believe you have been blessed with our worship and the service as well. So I want to encourage you again just to appreciate you. You who has been standing with the work of God through your giving, uh, your offering and your tithe, God richly bless you. Indeed, you have touched our heart and we are glad. As the pastors, we are praying for you. You will never lack in your season of hardship. God will always be your provider. And so, if you want to give, continue giving. There is a number down there. You can use it just to give your tithe and also to give your offering. At the same time, there are people in our midst who have lost their job, are our members. And so, we would like us to join hands together and just be a blessing to them. In fact, this period of coronavirus, there are some who have lost their job, they have been chased away from their, uh, their houses, and they have nothing. We, as a family of God, we want to stand with them. And so you can also use the number down there just to uh, share the love of God together with them. And as you give, I believe our God will bless you. That is his word. Give, and it shall come back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, it shall overflow. So God bless you even as you give. Let me pray for you. Father in heaven, I pray Jehovah God, even as my hearer is giving today, let your blessing overflow over his family, over her family, over his business, over her business in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, because it is your promise. As we give, you will give back to us. I bless you and I worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, even as you give. Amen. I greet you all in the name of Jesus Christ. And I want to thank God so much because of this opportunity that he has given me to share the word of God with you this morning. Um, I want to share on a message that I've titled, Wait on God. Wait on God. Uh, in this season, fear can creep into our hearts. Sometimes discouragement can find its way into our hearts. You feel that you are feeling as if you are hopeless because the wait has been too long. And you are wondering, when will this situation end? And you are wondering, maybe, is there anything that God has for me? And I just want to read a passage of scripture in the book of Genesis. Um, in the book of Genesis chapter 15, I would like to read from verse 1 to 7. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision saying, Do not be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield and your exceedingly great reward. But Abraham said, Lord God, what will you give, in, what will you give me? Seeing I go childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. Then Abraham said, Look, you have given me no offspring. Indeed, one born in my house is my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, This one shall not be your heir, but one who will come from your own body shall be your heir. Then he, put, he brought him outside, and, uh, and said, look now toward heaven and count the stars, if you are able to number them. And he said to him, so shall your descendants be. And he believed in the Lord, and he accounted to him for righteousness. May the Lord bless his word. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your word this morning. Father, we commit ourselves to you, dear Lord. Your word, O oh God, is our bread, and your word gives us life. Father, may you minister to us, each one of us, and use me as a vessel for the glory of your name to bring this word into the hearts of your people. In the name of Jesus, I do pray and give thanks. Amen. And so, as I said, that in this season, sometimes you can feel like you are hopeless, 
and you are discouraged or like it's taking too long. Or maybe there's something that you have been trusting God for and maybe you are seeing like it has taken too long. And such was Abraham's situation together with his wife, Sarah. As we have read in the, uh, in the, in the, in the book of Genesis, the Lord is appearing to Abraham in a vision in verse one and saying to him, do not be afraid. I am your shield, your exceedingly great reward. But you know, this thing was disturbing Ar Abraham. Though the God of all the earth, the God who created the heavens and the earth is speaking to him, but there is something that is bothering Abraham. He's grown old, actually very old, and he doesn't have a, a child of his own. And he's telling God, Lord God, what will you give me? I go childless. The heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. You see, he was seeing that somebody whom he, who has been employed uh, uh, in his own homestead is the one who is going to be his, his, uh, his heir. But the Lord is, is, is uh, telling him that this one shall not be your heir, but one who will come from your body shall be your heir. You know, and the Lord is bringing him outside. It was in the night and he's telling him, can you be able to count the stars in the heavens? And Abraham could not. And he's telling him, I'm going to bless you and you're going to, be, uh, to, to have an offspring from your own loins. It is something that is not easy that, you know, Abraham was very old and his wife was also very old. And they did not, you know, from a human perspective, they did not look people who can have offspring. But the Lord spoke and he promised Abraham. And the Bible says that Abraham believed. I am here to encourage you that whatever you have been trusting God for, it shall come to pass. I'm here to tell you, wait on God. In chapter 17 of the same Genesis, uh, in verse 3, the Bible says that uh, the, uh, okay, let me read in verse, from verse 1. When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, I am almighty God. Walk before me and be blameless. I will make, and I will make my covenant between me and you. You will, mot uh, 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 and will multiply you exceedingly. You know? And in verse 4, the Lord is still telling Abraham, as for me, Behold my covenant with you, and you shall be a father of many nations. You shall be a father of many nations. And now when you look at the Abraham, who is being told this thing? In verse 1 we have been told, Abraham was 99 years. But the Lord is promising him and telling him, you will be a father of many nations. And so Abraham chose to believe God. He chose to trust in the word of God. And you know, sometimes you could be going through difficult times, but when the Lord speaks in your life, if there is a promise that God made to you, it shall come to pass. I am reminded of Job. Job, in, uh, in, in the book of Job, uh, chapter 23, the Bible says that from verse 8, Job was going through a very difficult time. He had lost his children. He had lost all his wealth. And now he had also lost his, his health. And Job was there and waiting on God. And in chapter 23, verse 8, he, Job is saying, I go forward, he's not there. And backward, I can, but I cannot perceive him. When he, he, he walks on the left hand, I cannot behold him. When he turns to the right hand, I cannot see him. But he knows the way that I take. When he has tested me, I shall come forth as gold. And so Job, at some point in his trial, at some point during the time when he was going through all these difficulties, he could not, you know, he could not feel the presence of God in his life. And it happens to us, when you are going through a difficult time, when you are going through, you know, moments when you feel like it's hopeless, 
It's like God is not in your life. You don't feel his presence anymore. But Job was saying, I go forward. He's not there. I go backward. I cannot perceive him. When he walks on the left hand, I cannot behold him. He was feeling as if God had deserted him. But he turns again and he says, he knows the way that I take. When he has tested me, I shall come forth as gold. At times, God, he is quiet in our lives and we wait. Like, for instance, we have been praying concerning the pandemic that is in our nation and there has been difficulty, but God is still there. And the prayers that we are praying according to his will, we know that this thing, it shall come to get a resolution. There shall come an answer from God in the long run. I just want to encourage you, continue to pray, continue to trust God. Do, there is hope when you put your trust in the Most High God. You see, when you read in the book of uh, Romans, chapter 4 from verse 17, as it is written, I have made you a father of many nation, nations, in the presence of whom he believed, God who gives life to the dead, and calls things which do not exist as though they were, as though they did. I want to encourage you, begin to imitate God and use his word and speak things into being that are not. You know, we are being told that God calls those things which do not exist as if they exist. He's telling Abraham, you're going to be a father of many nations. When you look at Abraham, he does not look like somebody who can have, uh, be a father of many nations because he's already past that age of giving birth to, ch of, 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 of siring children. And in verse 18, we are being told that who contrary to hope, in hope believed, so that he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken. So shall your descendants be. And being not weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about a hundred years old and the deadness of Sarah's womb. Abraham, he chose not to consider his body 19, 99 years old. He did not look at his, at his body. The Bible is saying that his body was already dead and his he, Sarah's womb, the deadness of Sarah's womb. But the Bible says that Abraham, he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God and being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was able to, to perform. And therefore it was accounted to him for righteousness. My brother and my sister, maybe you are looking at your children and you are wondering, are this going to come out something from this? Can, can anything come out, come, come out of these children? The way you look at them from a human perspective. But I want to urge you, look at the promises of God. Look at what God says concerning the children of the righteous. They shall be mighty upon the earth and continue to pray for them, continue to speak the word of God over their lives, continue to trust God and wait on God, because when God is waited upon, he surely does come through. Are you looking at your situation? Maybe you've been trusting God for this and for that. Maybe you've been trusting God to give you a baby. You, you have, you, you, you've been waiting together with your spouse for God to give you a baby and you have not gotten one yet. Continue to trust God. Continue to knock on God's door and to wait in faith. Faith pleases God, and God will come through for you. And so Abraham, he was the past that age, but the Bible says that God was able to bring alive uh, Abraham, and he was able to sour, uh, have a child together with his his wife, uh, Sarah, who was also quite uh, advanced in years. And have faith in God. Wait on God. When you wait on God, 
Many a time he takes us through, you know, trials. He puts us in, in the fiery furnace. And when he's done with us, like Job is saying, that I know that once he has tested me, I shall come forth as gold. My sister, wait on God. My brother, wait on God. Whatever it is that you are trusting God for, even if it is a job, even if it is whatever it is that you are trusting, a husband, a wife, God is able to give you the right person who has the grace to live with you the way you are. And so when we come to the book of uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 11, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You know, you have an, an evidence of things that are not seen. They are not seen, but you are speaking of them as if they are already there. You see, and by it, for by it the elders obtained a good testimony. And when we read in verse 3, by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that things uh, which are seen were not made of things which are visible. You see, the worlds and the heavens and everything that is there, God spoke his word into existence of those things. So we should also imitate God, God who calls things that are not there as though they are, and God who speaks things into existence as if and, and things stand and we see them with our own eyes. And so trust God, believe in God, wait on God, do not be impatient. The writer of Psalms 40 says, I waited on God patiently and he came and removed me from a, a, a my repeat and he put my feet on, on a rock. Wait on God. When you wait on God, we have seen in this, uh, 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 when, when the Bible is speaking about the people who are, you know, they had faith in their hearts. The, we are seeing they all, God always came through for them. When you read the whole of I Hebrews chapter 11, we see that, you know, God came through for them. So trust God, God fulfills his promises. And so, what can we learn from Abraham? What can we learn from Job? What can we learn from, you know, believing and waiting on God? Number one, God fulfills his promises. God fulfills his promises. And God will always come through for you. And so, the Bible admonishes us that we should continue to pray. We should continue to trust God because God does not disappoint in, uh, in Colossians uh, chapter, uh, chapter 4 and verse 2, the Bible says, Continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. Thanking God, though you have not yet received it, but you believe that it is coming. Because the God that you are calling upon is a faithful God. So the Bible is admonishing us, continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving, earnestly, pleading with God, earnestly, in prayer, and God will come through for you. Believe in God. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5 and 6, trust God with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. If he said he will do it, he will do it at his own time. And then again in the book of Philippians, I would like to read that as well. Chapter 4 and verse 6, be anxious for nothing, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So continue to seek God, continue to pray, and be careful for nothing. Do not be anxious, anxiety. It has never been known to do us good. God did not create us with a capacity to be anxious. When we become anxious and when we worry, sometimes it comes and it affects our health. So the Bible is very correct in saying, do not be anxious. Do not be troubled about anything. Leave everything into the hands of God. Even if you are seeing it coming, you know it is just at the verge because you have trusted God in that thing, just continue to trust God. 
continue to put your trust in God. And I love the verse that we have read in the book of Romans. I mean, the, the scriptures that we have read in the, in the book of Romans, uh, chapter 4 and verse 20. The Bible says, Abraham, he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God and being fully convinced, you know, that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. So my brother and my sister, trust God like Abraham. Do not waver, you know, kuyumba yumba. Do not waver in your faith, but be fully convinced, be fully persuaded that he, God, who has promised, he is also able to perform and to make a way where there is no way. God makes way where there is no way. And he's able to make a way for you in the situation that you are trusting him in. I'm, I'm being reminded of Caleb and Joshua. When they, when they were sent, they were sent in the book of Numbers chapter 13. They went a, 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 a leader from the 12 tribes of Israel. And they went and they spied the land of Canaan. And God had spoken and said, I'll give you this land for a possession and for an inheritance. But when they went, the, ten, the leaders from the ten tribes, the Bible says that they came and they imparted fear. They came with an evil report. They are saying, we look as though we are grasshoppers to those people in Canaan. But you see, Caleb, Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, let us go at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. Not because he was so strong, because he trusted God. Trust God and believe God and the Lord will bless you. I would like to end there and I would like to pray for you that you believe God and wait on God. No matter your situation, nothing is difficult before God. God is able to come through for you. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your word this morning. Dear Lord, as we continue to wait on you, Jehovah God, we believe with all our hearts, O oh God, that you shall come through for us according to your purposes and according to your plan in the name of Jesus. I want to commit my brother, I want to commit my sister, dear father, who have been waiting on you, dear Lord, waiting on you in the name of Jesus with a prayer that they have lifted up to you, Jehovah God, for a child, O oh God, for a job, O oh God, for even the improvement in the characters of their children, dear Father, for their marriages, O oh God. They've been going through a difficult time in their relationship, O oh God. I lift all these things before you, even those who are unwell in their bodies, my Father, and they've been calling upon your name. Dear Lord, you are the Lord of Lords and you are the King of Kings and you are able, dear Father, to come through for your people in their various situations. May you bless your people. May you meet with their needs, O oh God. May you, O oh God, come through for us, O oh God. We need you so much desperately that you may intervene, O oh God, in our various situations, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. And Father, we commit everything to you and we rest in our hearts, O oh God, because you have called us to a life of rest and faith in you. We thank you and we bless you because Lord, as we wait on you, you come and you make way where there is no way. You come with provision and blessings in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Spirit. We pray and we give thanks. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. Amen.
forget you all my days in every situation you have never felt God of yesterday God of today God of tomorrow you're still the same my very present help in the time